Welcome everyone. In this video, I'll give you an overview of Lightroom's output modules, book, slideshow, print, and web. I want you to get a sense of what you can do in each module before we delve into all of the detail. Now I love how these output creation capabilities are within Lightroom so that I can move seamlessly from library to develop to creating output. If they weren't in Lightroom, then I would have to export copies of my edited photos and then go open up another program to create output with. I'll start here in the book module. The book module is primarily intended for designing and ordering Blurb books. Blurb is a photo book publisher that Adobe has partnered with because they produce good quality books and they have high customer satisfaction. In all versions of Lightroom, you can order high quality photo books. In Lightroom Classic CC, you can also order magazines and less expensive trade books. In addition though, you can export your book design as a multi-page PDF or as a set of single page JPEG files. You could potentially have another book publisher publish your book from the PDF, though that's not as simple as it sounds since Blurb's exact size for an 8x10, for example, might not be the exact size that another publisher needs. You could certainly check that out, though. In addition, though, a PDF is an ebook, so you could share your ebook with people electronically, or you can download the PDF to your mobile device, maybe to showcase your work as a portfolio. Exporting the pages to JPEG gives you the same capabilities, but also opens up the book module for design work for any purpose. For example, maybe I want to create a single page of nicely formatted photos and text for a brochure or a card, for example. I could create and design a single page book and export that as a JPEG. I could even import that JPEG back into Lightroom and print it through the print module. Now I've pretty quickly created this sample book just to give you a little bit of an idea of its capabilities. There are many cover formats to choose from. You can easily place text on your book and format that text. You can create text pages, pages with headers and multiple columns of text, text in photos. Now Lightroom Classic CC users using at least version 7.5 can place photos anywhere you want. That's not the case in earlier versions, but you'll still find that there are tons of page formats available to you with photos and or text. I'll do shift tab to hide all of my panels so these are bigger. You can have two page spreads, room around your photos on the page, photos that take up the whole page, multiple photos on a page, overlapping photos if you have Lightroom Classic CC, etched borders, titles or captions or other text with your photos in Lightroom Classic CC, borders around the cells or the photos, text and photos, film strips, different colored backgrounds for your pages, photos in the background. Actually, that reminds me, I missed one thing up here graphics in the background if you choose. Now, I mentioned that there are tons of page formats. I'll click on the little drop down here just to give you an idea. If I go to multiple photos here and I scroll down, you'll see some of them that are available here. So lots of choices. I'll do shift tab again. Let's go to the print module. In the print module, you design your print layout and then you can either print it to your photo printer from here in Lightroom, or you can export the result as a JPEG file. You could have someone else print that JPEG, or you could share it electronically. Much of the time, of course, people are printing single photos from here. In addition, though, you can make contact sheets that have or don't have text below the thumbnails, have what's called an identity plate on the page, that you can place anywhere. You can control the number of columns and rows. Here's actually another example using the contact sheet functionality 
with one row and three columns where I've used three copies of the same photo to span the three cells. Then I've added this text or identity plate below. You can also do what are called picture packages. If you're a portrait photographer, for example, and the family you're shooting for wants two four by sixes, two two by threes, one eight by 10, etc., you can easily produce these. Finally, you can lay out photos freeform on the page. Cells can easily be added and moved around. You control what's on top and what's on the bottom, etc. I really love this custom package or freeform layout capability here in the print module. Now the print module does not allow you to have as much text and as nicely formatted of text as the book module. So if you want something simple in terms of text, you could do it here in the print module, but it does have its limits. Let's go to the slideshow module. And I'll open up a saved slideshow here. Now the slideshow probably gets the most criticism in that there are third-party programs that have many more features than Lightroom slideshow module. But depending on your needs, this might be sufficient. You can play your design slideshow full screen from here in Lightroom, or you can export a PDF or a video of your slideshow. If you export a video, it would contain music that you can add here. Now I'm not going to play this slideshow because it would show full screen and I'm only capturing a part of the screen. I'll preview it here from within Lightroom. I'll first do shift tab to hide my panels. When you play it, you would not see all of this Lightroom interface behind the slideshow. But just to give you an idea of what you can have. You can have a title slide, photos with captions or titles or other photo information that can be placed anywhere. This pan and zoom feature, you can control the speed on that as well. The choice of borders around the photos or not. You can change the background color. Let me go ahead and advance to the end of this. And you can have an ending slide. You can also have title slides in between sections in your slideshow. I'll show you a trick for getting those. I'll stop this. And I'll hit Shift Tab. There are some other capabilities as well. You can have an image in the background. You can control how long the slides are up and whether one fades into the other, etc. Let's go to the final module, the web module. Now this is the least understood module, and I would guess the least used module, but it can be useful. It allows you to build web galleries or photo web pages that you would upload to your website. Now many of you may be saying, I don't have a website. But in fact, many internet service providers provide web space for you so that you can build a personal website. Now the web functionality here doesn't allow you to build full websites with home pages and contact pages. It's just the photo pages. But you could upload one of these and either link to them from your main website or just send your friends or clients a link to these galleries. Let's take a look at a few of them. I'm going to go out to my web browser. I've clicked on Preview in Browser to generate the pages out there. This particular design, it's the classic gallery or in older versions, the HTML gallery, is available in all versions of Lightroom covered by this series. You can format this front page with a different number of rows and columns, different background color and grid color, text colors, when you click on an individual photo, you go to the single photo pages and then you use the next button to scroll through them. You can have titles or captions on your images. You can have a link down here that would either open up an email if someone clicks on it or send them out to a website. Let's go to another gallery. This one is called the Grid Gallery and is available in Lightroom Classic. Click on a single page then I would scroll through. And then finally, here's another one available in Lightroom Classic. This one's the Square Gallery. 
again, you can control background colors, whether text shows here or not. Now Lightroom 5 has the fewest design options. Most of them are flash, which I don't recommend using. So for you, this basic design is what you'll have to work with. All right, that's it for the overview of the output modules. The last thing I'll cover are shortcuts for getting to the output modules. Now I love how I can use G for grid to get to the library module and D for develop to get to the develop module. Unfortunately, the shortcuts get more complicated after that. These modules are numbered one through seven. You can get to the modules with the shortcuts Control Alt and the number on PC or Command Option and the number on Mac. So Command Option 4 will take me to the book module. Command Option 7 takes me to the web module. All right, that's it for this overview of the output modules. In the next section of this series, I cover output concepts.